Okay, so here's our tutorial of doing our little bunny slash hair. And if you haven't done so already, the stage you want to be at when you um, start this video is that you've already sketched out your hair. And so the you can use the template and transfer that onto your paper. You can sketch it freehand based on the resource photo that I've got there. Um, uh, it's up to you, but that's where you want to be at before you start this video. Okay, and I'm using today just pan watercolours rather than watercolours in tubes. The watercolours in tubes undoubtedly have a deeper pigment and you can get some incredible effects. And I'll be going into those in some other uh, tutorials that I do in the coming weeks. But for today, we're just gonna use pan watercolours. And if you're doing this because you're on lockdown because of Corona um, and you're doing this with the kids, any paints will do. You're gonna get different effects to me if you're using different paper and different paints, but that's fine. Let's enjoy ourselves today. Um, some key colours that you're definitely going to need is you're going to need a blue of some description. A French ultramarine is your standard dark blue. That there is a cerulean blue and we might use that later or a turquoise. So a couple of blues, one light blue, one dark blue is great. A purple if you want to and I've got a blue violet and a purple there. These all look black on the screen, don't they? Um, but I can assure you they are. Burnt Sienna or Raw Sienna, a bricky reddy brown and I've got two different versions of a bricky reddy brown and I'll be using them. If you haven't got a bricky reddy brown, just a standard brown that's in your um, kit if you've got just you know standard 12 colours and then add in a bit of red as we go and we'll be all right we'll be using a red probably and I've got a yellow ochre in there as well yellow ochre is really useful um, so a mustardy yellow and again we could play around with the bricky brown and add a bit of normal yellow we can play around with it but I'm just using that and this is my favourite watercolour kit this is what I take with me when I go all around the world anywhere I take this in my bag, in my luggage. So even though most of my studio time, I'm an oil painter, this is what I use with my sketchbook. And I replace, there are some brand new ones there because I use that purpley um, blue all the time, but I just replace the pans as I go. And that's, that's my kit. So I bought an empty tin. And when I go on holiday, I take two brushes. And I take a rigger, and I think that's a number two rigger. So riggers are, let me put that down and show you against that. So riggers are like the long, thin, they're almost like a sign writer's brush. That's still got a bit of paint on it. How naughty. Bad brush management. A rigger and I've got a half inch flat brush. Both of these are synthetic. They are quite cheap. Um, and I use a lot of them. I'm just going to get rid of some of that. Um, the most expensive brush in this collection, and I'm probably only going to use two or three brushes, is this. And that is a sable brush, so it's really soft, and that's a number eight sable. And probably most watercolour artists will tell you about number eight sables are just so useful. So it's quite fluffy. It can hold quite a lot of water, but because it's a sable, it goes down to a beautiful point. So on that note, when you have your jar of water, don't ever leave your brushes in it like that. That's enough to send an artist loopy because you will ruin the point of your brush. So even as an oil painter, I don't, I don't leave them in the oil <laughs> like that. Leave your brushes flat, have a bit of waste paper, something next door to you. I've got my watercolour paper. I've printed this or sketched this onto watercolour paper. This isn't mega super duper quality. It's a bit thicker than cartridge paper. It's, it's a bit nicer, but it's not super duper quality. And I haven't stretched it either. Um, it will cockle up, it will bow and bend. And the reason I've done that is probably you won't have had time to have stretched yours. So we'll deal with those problems. Um, and I know several professional watercolour artists who don't stretch their paper anymore. They use really high quality, heavyweight paper and then they flatten it at the end. When everything's dry, they either put a pile of books on it and let it flatten out or even iron it. I think you've got to be careful that you don't damage the paper if you iron it, but don't worry about stretching. I know it's a stumbling block for lots of people. And you might not be able to have done any of that. You might have just had some cartridge paper and printed the template off rather than sketched it. Or you might be working on just random paper or you might be working in a sketchbook. 
it really doesn't matter. Let's enjoy ourselves painting our hair today. So I've got a couple of things in my sketchbook here from quite a while ago. And I just wanted to show you those first because these, the watercolour added onto these is about a five minute job because I'd already inked in some details. So after you've done this video, if you're not delighted with your results, why not try getting a bit of pen and ink? And it, you don't have to have an expensive pen. You could just, you could have a black biro and you put in all your details first over the top of your sketch. You could do all of that in pen and the whiskers and the eyebrows and the stuff coming out. And then you just do a really wet, blurry mess over the top and it looks really effective. And I've played around with turquoises in the background, which I think we're going to use. I like that turquoise next to the brown. And making a bluey grey, I think the bluey grey is more effective than the purple. I love purple, but I think on this occasion I'm going to try and not use too much of it. And the other thing to notice is there's quite a lot of white space. So I'm just going to put that to one side and I'm going to talk about that white space. Now, you might just have this on a screen if you've got two screens. So you might have this on an iPad and then be watching this on your computer. It doesn't really matter. But you have to plan ahead with watercolour. We've got to look at these whites, the whites around the edge of the eye. So we've got the biggest change in value in tone is how dark that eye gets. That hair is wearing, that bunny is wearing eyeliner. And then we've got white areas. We've got white areas in the ears and obviously around his nose. Oh, lovely. And we've got a few white highlights there. So we've got to think about that while we're painting. And you'll also notice on my sketch, on my template, I've made his ears a bit longer. So I've kind of gone for somewhere in between a hare or a rabbit. So it doesn't really matter. I think this is a jack rabbit. I think the source photo is a jack rabbit, not a hare. His, his ears are too short and wide to be a hare. But I've just kind of changed that. And you could do that too. You could make them very rounded and much shorter if you want to keep him as a little Easter bunny and you could keep him high. You can also think about doing this much, much smaller and turn it into a little Easter card for somebody if you would like to. OK, so I think it's time for us to get going. I think that will be nice. So the first thing, I'm just getting some more stuff on my screen so that I can um, zoom in. Right. OK, so... I've got clean water. That's the other thing. Pause the video if you need clean water. I've got two jugs of water here um, and that's useful. And I've also got my hairdryer here because I want to do this in one hit. But if you if your hairdryer is upstairs and you're painting downstairs, just leave it. Just walk away. Have a cup of tea when when things need to be dried out. Um, it's only for speed that I'm doing it. OK, so we're going to begin and I'm going to get my big swooshy number eight brush so get your bigger brush even if you've got a flat brush that's fine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get quite a lot of my hair wet I think I'm going to have to start calling it a rabbit rather than a hair because otherwise we're just gonna not know whether I'm talking about the hair or not you can see because of the graphite pencil I used that's already blurring out so you might have to be careful about that okay so I I'm, I'm, don't want to paint that because that's white. I don't want to paint in around the eye. So I've got to be a bit careful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my yellow ochre. And if you haven't got a yellow ochre, let me just show you how you might mix it. Is you're going to get any old brown that you've got and you're going to mix it in with some yellow. That's a bit too bright. But something like that. Either colour is fine. But I'm going to use my yellow ochre. And all I'm going to do... I'm going to look at my reference photo and the top of the nose is darker than the sides. And you'll see I'm not painting. I'm, it's almost as if I've got a pipette in my hand and I am feeding the watercolour in. Just letting it in and I'm letting there be some gaps. The gaps will keep it alive. And it's very, very easy to paint over white paper at the end if you think you've, you've not done it right. But it's very, very hard to get it back. And there are lots of ways, just while we're feeding that in, there are ways that you can get it back. So one is that you can use masking fluid to mask off 
um, white areas and put, putting a little dot of masking fluid in the eye might be beneficial and having some flicks of masking fluid out for the whiskers could be beneficial but we're not doing that today because lots of you might not have masking fluid. Another way of getting back white paper is by scratching it out with a scalpel. We're not doing that today either in case you're doing this with young ones and the last thing you want is to start getting scalpels out. And lastly, the way to get back some white paper is to completely cheat and to use either white gouache or white acrylic paint and flick in some white right at the end that way. So basically some opaque white rather than translucent watercolour. And that's the way you would do it. OK, so I'm just going to carry on feeding in my my yellowy ochre hmm. into there. So now... What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go a little bit darker. I've got a redder brown. So again, if you haven't got that ready brown and you've just got a boring old brown, so there's my boring old brown, is you could put in a bit of red to it to just warm it up a bit. You've got to be careful when you're using red on animals because obviously it looks like blood. And so if you do big splatters of red, that's not good. That's not good, actually. So I'm just going to tone that down with a little bit of blue. So then you get a sort of, oh, that's quite nice. Oh, that's a nice colour. So play around. If you're trying to get the right colour and you can't get it in time, you just pause it and play around with your colour. So I'm going to feed in a bit more of this darker, slightly darker version of my ochre. And so I'm being careful here. I want to preserve that white around his eye I want to get a bit more here and what I love this stage I absolutely love this stage the reason I love this stage is because we're still doing wet and wet the paper is still wet but it's beginning to dry and I think the reason I love this stage is because most of the time when I'm doing watercolour I'm out and about and if I'm you know sit, picture the scene sitting in a cafe in Paris sketching away guess what it's warm and the paper dries and you can see what's happening here so this side the paper is dry this side the paper is wet and it's dispersing in and it's just luscious so I'm just adding it in if you get hard lines where you don't want hard lines just blend it in and the easiest way in the world to do that is to get rid of stir your brush get rid of all the color on your brush Get rid of most of the moisture so it's just a bit damp. Let's find it. There's a hard line. And just gently blend, blend, blend that in. Okay. But most of the time, I quite, I'm quite, i going quite messy, I have to admit. And I quite like that effect. I just think it's really beautiful. Okay, I'm just going to get a little bit more of my ochre on the sides here because I'm going to get some grey on there later and I just want a bit more, a bit more on there. So I'm still preserving his little white nose. Ah, And I'm also going to let, well, we're going to have some plants and some bits and bobs. We might have some pretty flowers or we might make it a bit more eastery, but I'm just going to let his body just fade out a bit. So I don't want that too strong because I want to be able to paint over it with my plants, but I just want a bit more of him on there. Lovely. Oh, he's going really well. OK, so now I'm going to make a bluey grey. And this is probably one of the most useful colours you can learn to mix. And this works for watercolours, for acrylics and for oils. And it's that bricky brown, so burnt sienna and French ultramarine. Those two colours appear in almost every ready-made set. And look at that, it is a super bluey grey. It's just fabulous. And when you mix that up really strongly with hardly any water in, it's as close to black. We're going to be using this a lot later on um, as we go through this. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bluer, but it's a super bluey grey. And what I'm going to do now is looking at my reference picture, I'm just going to pull out some of those areas where it's grey. And what's happened is my painting is still wet, which is just lush. And I'm really happy that it's still wet because that's what I want. Lovely. 
I'm gonna I'm still gonna avoid that nose even though there is some grey in amongst the mouth there I'm just gonna avoid that at this stage now I think that's gone a bit strong so if you're in the same situation if if at any point you're painting you're thinking ah you can just blot it out with a bit of tissue I've got some paper towel bit of tissue whatever bit of kitchen roll even a bit of cloth if you want your sleeve whatever <laughs> there we go okay so I'm just I'm being a bit cautious, actually. I'm being much more cautious than I normally would be. I really like that. I really like that. Okay. And I'm going to get a little bit more darkness in. So this is a brownie version of that brownie grey. And I'm just going to put in a little bit more dark on the edge of his ears. Remember, I've made my ears a bit longer and a bit pointier. You don't have to. Oh. And there's still quite a lot of white paper in here, quite a lot. I'm going to start building up some form now and getting a few of these darker tones. So we've got quite a lot underneath his chin there that's darker. So I'm just going to build that up. He's pretty. And I'm going to use that blue here with a few of those darker tones in there. That's quite nice too. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop for a bit. So you might wanna catch up and just start thinking about where am I going a bit darker and be conscious of leaving some of these white areas. I just had a slurp of coffee then, it's delicious. Okay, that's quite nice. So while you're painting, I'm just going to talk through some of the things that I really like about this already before I go any further. I love that little gap of white. So even though I might put some pink in there for the inside of the year later, at the moment I want to preserve that. I love this. There's some happy accidents happening here in the body where the blue is dispersing into that beautiful warm yellow ochre. And then there's some gaps in the white. I love that. So I don't want to ruin that at the moment. And when you hear all the time people talking about, oh, you've overworked it. That's what we're talking about. Of I'm trying to stop myself overworking it by just, just leaving it alone and just letting that be. And I think just before all of this dries, I'm going to very gently start getting in. Let me just show you again. Some of the greys around his mouth. Now, there's quite a pronounced line where that white fur is and then it goes darker. And I'm not going to do that just yet because I think when it's white all around there, it looks really cute. So I'm going to try and get some of that that's sort of the bottom is his chin, as it were. I'm going to try and do some of that subtly and then maybe a little bit of subtle grey. But I'm treading carefully. So if you're not quite ready for that bit yet, pause the vid um, and then come back to me when you're ready. So what I've done is I've got that... Um, grey that we mixed with the blue and the brown it's there's more blue than brown in it there's no black at all and I've really diluted it down I've really diluted it down and I'm just going to put in a little bit of shadow and if you go too dark you're going to grab that tissue straight away while it's still wet and soften it and that is exactly what I'm going to do so I want to soften that out I just want a suggestion of it and this is something that comes with practice of just knowing how much water you have on your brush, that sort of thing. But also it, with watercolour, there are happy accidents all the time. And it's knowing when to preserve them or when to go, oh, that's not a happy accident at all. I've got to trim that down and again. I'm just softening that grey because I'm really worried about ruining that white. I think the white of his nose is going to be absolutely key to making this a really pretty picture. <clears throat> I'm just going to put in a couple more bits in here. And I love this. I love what's happening here with these ears. And that came from just feeding the paint in rather than really painting it on as if I'm painting the skirting boards. OK, so I'm going to whip my hairdryer out now because I want to move on to some more dry work. If you haven't got your hairdryer and you've got to this stage, that's fine. Just let it dry for a bit. It's not going to take me long because there's not that much. 
and I've got a couple of, if just a word of warning, if you're using your hairdryer and I've got some pooling there, there's some good stuff happening there. If I blat that too hard with my hairdryer, that's just going to disperse out. Now, sometimes we want that effect. It's a great effect, but sometimes we don't. So I'm going to go down this way so that if that drips, it drips in that particular way. So ideally what I want is not much um, whiz and lots of heat. Yeah, you can see that's moving down a bit, but that'll be all right. exactly what's happened there. I've got my hairdryer out. I've now got a dribble. I'm just going to wipe that out now while I've got a chance. <laughs> Bit of clean water. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. There are also, you can buy, I think I've got some somewhere, magic sponges. <laughs> and, um, and they can get rid of little mistakes like that as well. But if you act on them quick, you can get rid of it. Okay. Now, broadly speaking, it is better for you to just leave it alone. That works much, much better. Okay, I'm just checking about the video there. There we go. Right. Um, but if you want to use your hairdryer, that's great. Okay. So now that's dry, I can start adding in some details and I want to think about something here. So again, let's just go back to our reference photo. And if you've if you haven't printed this off and you've just got it on your screen, it's better because you can just zoom in. Um, this eye is more useful to me than this eye because this eye looks almost completely black and I don't want to do it completely black. But this eye, we've, we've got that lovely hazel colour. We've got the black inside. We've got black on the edge. We've got our eyelashes. Lovely. I'm going to go to town on that. And we've got a white dot for some reflected light in the eye and we really want to preserve that. So... Here's what I'm going to try and do for my eyes. I'm still going to blend in some of this, but we're just going to see what happens first. Right. I'm going to get a nice hazily colour. So again, you can use your bricky brown and mix it with some ochre or mix it with some yellow, whatever you've got. But you want a nice, lovely, hazily colour. And I'm just going to make sure I don't get my own head in the way of the video because I'm now leaning into this. And you're realising I haven't got my glasses on. I'm new to wearing glasses. I just haven't got the hang of it. It's not vanity, I promise you. <laughs> I just can't get the hang of wearing them. Um, but I think I could probably do with them on this close-up stuff. Hmm. Okay. So what I've done is I've got this nice circle of hazel. Um, where I'm leaving room for my black. I'm just putting in a little bit more power. To that colour and I've preserved my white paper that's nice now we want that to be dry or certainly drier before we put in the black because the black if I put in a dot of black now so you're all itching to do that stop it if I put in a dot of black now it's going to go and ruin what I've already got so I'm not going to do that <clears throat> okay what I am going to do while we're doing that is I'm going to mix a black so I have got a little black in my set, or in fact, I've got Payne's Grey in my set. <sighs> yeah, it's kind of useful, but with animals, try to not use black because black doesn't really appear in nature on its own. Um, black represents death. Black represents things being burnt to a crisp. So we, it's better for us to mix our blacks. And one of the ways you can do that is back with that French ultramarine. So your darkest 
blue and look at what happens i'm using this small brush with hardly any water on it wow is that a power blue that's a lovely blue and then back to that bricky brown and that will make a really dark color and if you want to you can bung in a touch of purple in it too just to really blacken it down but let me just get a spare piece of paper <laughs> pretty dark it's pretty dark I'm gonna go a bit brown that's too purple there you go so that's what we're using instead of black if you've got black and you can't get if your pigments aren't as strong as mine and you're not getting a depth of color like that use your black okay but mix in a bit of brown and a bit of blue to it so that it doesn't deaden it and, and it's really important because the eyes are where we're going to get all of our lovely character. And if we kill those eyes with black, it'll be such a shame. OK, short slurp of coffee and off we go. Right. So let's see what happens. We just want to make sure my head isn't in the way. So this is almost dry. So it's going to disperse a bit, which I kind of want. So I'm going round that white dot. Yeah, see that that's dispersing a bit. It's kind of cute. La la la. So I'm preserving my white glint at all costs. And then I'm going to go around the edge of the eye. So this is this is the hard bit. Um, if you're a bit shaky, if you're not used to painting, this is the bit that's going to make you go, oh, can't really do it. But don't worry about it. So this is also an opportunity if you're finding this really hard or if you've watched me going, I haven't got a brush small enough, then that might be the point to get a, um, a pen out and uh, just to do it that way. Now, I can see that's dispersing too much. So in addition to having a paper towel handy, I've got a cotton wool bud. Can't paint without them. So I'm just going to lift out some of that black with my cotton wool bud because it's just dispersing away that I don't want. So I'm just going to leave those eyes now before I put on my eyelashes. And instead I'm going to move into getting some definition around his nose and his mouth. And this is this is fraught with danger because if we go in too dark, it's going to look like a sort of teddy bear sewn on mouth and nose, which maybe we want. You can cute him up if you want. Um, but we kind of with playing with watercolour in such a way where we want it to look more, I think more like a children's, pretty children's illustration, a pretty soft watercolour illustration rather than a cartoon. So that's why I've been avoiding these heavy lines. So what I've just done there is I've used that black colour, but I diluted it down. So my black is my dark blue and my brown. And I've diluted it down. And I said at the beginning we'd be using this one a lot. And boy, have we. And just different variations on a theme. We've used that colour. So I'm just, there is a real temptation to swoop that up and make him smile. Which you can do if you want to make him uber cute. But I, I try and avoid it if, I, if, if you can. Um, because sometimes you then find, oh no, it looks silly now. But you've got to be careful on that. Right, so I'm now trying to blend in underneath his little chin. Oh, and I'm not doing it very well. So I've just got to keep on working on that. It's The paper's getting a little bit wetter, which is good for me because I'm on watercolour paper. If you're working on thick cartridge paper, you've got to start being careful. Have a very light touch when you have a lot of water on your paper if you're not working with watercolour paper and I'm also now getting I've just started moving on to getting some darks further down into his fur now this is now down to personal preference if you want that blended in you then have to go back to your big brush get it clean get rid of the excess water and blend it if you don't want a hard line but sometimes you can have a hard line and it looks kind of cool. Um, so that's going to be your personal preference. But if you don't want a hard line, you've got to do a bit of blending. And I want to do a bit more blending on that chin, actually. I'm not happy with that. 
uh, this is a plus point of track of doing a video all in one go is you know I can't I can't cheat it I can't just go and sit down for two hours and magically solve a chin problem I'm doing it here with you which is fun uh, he's quite cute yeah are you sweet so what I found myself doing since I've had that dark grey in my palette to do the edge of the eyes is I'm now just pushing in some extra darks into my mix into into my painting just where I can see there's a little bit more darkness going on and that's what's going to give my bunny a bit more form it's going to feel a bit more 3d and I'm just firming up some of these darker areas if I've gone too fast just pause and catch up but it depends on how dark you went in the first place. You might have gone much darker than me in the first place. I might be going, oh, I don't know why she's doing that. I'm way ahead of that. <laughs> Good for you. Okay. Lovely. He's so pretty. Okay. I'm definitely running the risk of overworking him now. Okay. So I just want to get a little bit more around the edges there before we put in those eyelashes and before we put in any whiskers. He's lush. Okay, so I'm gonna cheat again, get a bit more um, hairdryer action on him, and then we're gonna come back and do a bit more on the lashes. Oh, look at that, look at that straight away, a bit of movement going on there. Hoo -hoo. Before I put in his whiskers and his eyelashes, I'm going to blat in a bit of the background. You don't need to do this. If you want to keep the background plain, you can. But I think sometimes it's fun to get in bits of a background and you don't necessarily put it all the way over. You can just put it in little areas. And I'm going to do just that. I want to put something in here because this is the lighter side of him. So what I'm doing is getting some clean water and just blasting that over there, la 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 la. And I'm going to introduce to it turquoise, wee, and a bit of yellow, because I want it a sort of greeny turquoise. It's way too strong, way too strong. I don't like that colour. So I'm just gonna blast that out, there we go. So we just want this idea of a bit of it, and it's just gonna fade out a bit over here. And then I'm gonna have a bit up here, bit more turquoisey green, might have a bit more yellowy green gold, something like that, or lush. And I kind of want some of those gaps, I'm just sort of letting that be really, because I think it's more fun. And you can feed in a bit more strength of colour if you want but just not much of it, so you're not putting it everywhere. So it's deliberately uneven and splattery. I'm just going to dry that off as well now.
lovely okay so now I'm going to flick in those eyelashes so I'm going back to that black that we've already made with my blue and my brown I'm just going to show you on my hand so I'm practicing my flicks on my hand so I can see a how dark it is B, the consistency of the paint. So you might want to grab a spare piece of paper and just have a little practice go. And if you haven't got a really fine brush, don't ruin this with a big thick brush. Get a pen out, even get a pencil out. Pencils are lovely with watercolour. Um, but the eyelashes for me will really make it. And if you've seen my oil painting work, you will know how much I love eyelashes on hairs and on stags. So I'm starting near the eye and just flicking it out and there's a real temptation to go really long and actually you can get away with it if you look at the reference photo there's not only are there long eyelashes there's sort of long it's like the other eyebrow hair it flicks out as well Whee! i'm going to do a couple of them he's coming to life i love it but you really can do this with a pen if you want to um, it still looks pretty good and yeah in my first sketches that I showed you in the sketchbook all of that had been done with a pen and then the washes were done over the top so it's almost like the opposite of what we're doing now um, okay I'm going to do the same with his whiskers Whee! so it's quite a quick movement so that you don't get a big heavy line And some of these sort of droop right down. They're not just all straight out. And some of these are peculiar. Yeah, you can see I'm not doing it right now. Lovely. He's pretty, isn't he? I'm going to start adding a few dry brush details. So this is uh, the opposite of wet and wet. It's now dry. Uh, there's not much uh, water on my brush. There's no water on the painting itself. And I'm just flicking in some bits and bobs. You don't have to do that. If you think, oh, no, 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 I really like this soft look, then don't. Then don't do it. But I'm just putting in a couple of extra bits of detail where I think it needs it. But you don't have to. And I think that's something as well. The more you paint, the more you start realising what you really like, the effects you want, rather than just the effects that you can do. You start realising what you want your picture to look like okay I'm going to do some flicks now and again those of you that have seen my oil paintings will know I like some flicking action so I'm going to do some flicks for the whiskers so I'm being quite directional and I'm using this little tiny brush and I'm going to do some flicks near the eyes as well because they're really lovely so this is quite a controlled flick and it's really useful for just a little bit of niceness on his nose there. That's great. But now I'm going to have some more fun. I'm going to use still a rig. I'm not going to use my big number eight, but I'm going to use a bigger brush and I'm going to use a blue. And I'm not using that French ultramarine. I'm actually using King's blue, which isn't really very good as a watercolour, but I use it so much in my oil paints. But you could mix um, just normal French ultramarine with white if you've got white in your watercolour set and white is nearly always useless in a watercolour set as pure white but it's really useful to make a colour opaque so I could mix up a king's blue like that there we go so actually that's probably better than the pre-mix to be honest okay so I'm going to put in some blue into him oh lush then I'm going to go quite quickly now. I'm going to put in some of my bricky brownie colour. Lush, look at that. Now he's coming to life. I could go loop the loop actually with um, all Miss Blatt's. I really could. I'm just going to soften some of them out. I'm just going to put in some water onto the splats to make them disperse now because that's good fun. And then also with my white, which has now gone mucky, so we're just going to clean that off. I'm going to mix a bit of pink. I put a splatter of pink in every painting, even if sometimes it's hidden. It's a little tribute to my dad. So pink for Papa 
in that comes. There we go. So I've mixed in a little bit of alizarin crimson, I think, with some white. And that will lift it. I'm actually going to put a little squidge of pink into his ear as well. Lush. Isn't he pretty? And I'm just going to dry that off and then we're going to put a few flicks in for some flowers. Okay, so very lastly, I'm just going to have just a few suggestions of our hair nestling in some foliage. In our reference photo, we've got a few bits of greenery and stuff. So that's just, and I'm going quite tall. So this green is a very yellowy green. It's actually a premixed green, how naughty, and it's called green gold. Um, but you can easily mix it just with your French Ultra and a bit of yellow. And if it looks too mucky, whack in a little bit of that brown and you've got a really super colour as well. So I'm just putting in some grasses and go long, you know, go high. They're really, it's really fun to really play with it. And I'm going to put in some flicks at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is put in some water flicks, some big water flicks. There we go. And then when I add in some of these darker colours, they're going, when they hit that water, they're going to disperse into it. Lovely. So that's our lovely bunny hair rabbit with a few splattery grasses around it. And remember, you could play with that. You could add more pen and ink if you wanted more definition. You could add some flowers. You could do whatever you want, but that's your basic way of creating a lovely bunny rabbit in about 40 minutes or so, which is pretty good. Thanks so much for joining me today. Bye.